Given the present situation of the chip war with America, what would your next line of action be if you were placed in the large boots of the Chinese government? Regardless of what your answer may be, one thing is for sure. China is furious at the American government's antics, stopping them from technological advancements, and ASML. Why is China not retaliating? Or are they, like a dangerous cobra, waiting for the opportune moment to strike? Welcome to today's video, where we'll go through everything. When Chief Analyst Dylan Patel said, the two countries are officially in an economic war, you'd be hard-pressed to say he wasn't right about it. By estimating, the restrictions could be enough to reduce technological advancement on a global scale, as well as hampering trade in the industry to the tune of hundreds of billions of dollars. He also stated, this is the U.S. salvo against China's efforts to build its domestic tech capabilities. It's the U.S. firing back, making clear they will fight back. You see, the American restrictions on cutting-edge chip-making technology exports to China have certainly been a thorn in their rears. It has been the chief reason why China has not made any cutting-edge silicon-based chips for a while now. As you probably already know, chips are very important, from semiconductors and supercomputers to surveillance systems, and hey, even the advanced weapons that the American government is supposedly so worried about all require cutting-edge chips. And the crazy part of it all is that the effects of the chip ban could go well beyond just semiconductors alone. Every industry that relies upon high-end computing, from electric cars to aerospace to smartphones and computers, or hey, even smart homes, would be affected. But, did you know that while it was under the administration of Donald Trump that the chip war between both nations commenced, it is the moves that came to light from Joe Biden's administration that are the most aggressive yet? China is viewed as a threat, and the US officials would stop at nothing to checkmate their opposition by stopping them from developing cutting-edge technological strides in the industry. With that in mind, what exactly was the bigger picture? According to American officials, the sanctions and restrictions were pivotal. Someone had to stop China from being a military and economic thorn, and well, let's just say they gladly picked the short straw. All in all, their primary goal is to ensure the chipmakers in China get stopped from laying their hands on any cutting-edge machine needed to make advanced semiconductors, especially the extreme ultraviolet lithography machine, otherwise called UVs. To be more precise, the restrictions cover the production of logic chips using so-called non-planar transistors that are manufactured with 16 nanometer technology or perhaps something more advanced like 18 nanometer DRAM chips. The reason for this is simple. The smaller the number of nanometers, the more cutting edge the chip would be, leaving it with a greater capability. But, let's look at what some experts had to say, shall we? Technology analyst Dan Wang stated, the rules are a directional signal about US policy on China, a very hawkish consensus is now cemented in place. Gu Wenjun, the head of Chinese chip researcher Ikewise also had something interesting to say. In his words, the reality is the US is determined to use chips as a tool to contain China, there is no possibility of reconciliation. There's something we'd like to add, though. While the sanctions prohibit chipmakers from selling a. i. semiconductors to China, or those that could be used in supercomputers, those chipmakers are permitted to request an exception to the rules from the U.S. Department of Commerce, but such a request, according to senior officials, should already be presumed to be denied. Do you remember what we mentioned earlier about UV machines? Only one place in the world produces such advanced lithography machines, and that title belongs to none other than the Dutch firm ASML. However, due to their supremacy and exclusivity in the sector and, of course, the market, ASML is now the instrument of the rift between China and the West, in terms of access to cutting-edge technology. And, in recent months, the US has put a lot of pressure on the Netherlands to curb chip supplies to China, particularly from ASML. And now, According to Hong Kong CNN, the rules are being finalized. In response to the questions surrounding export controls, here's an official statement from the company. It is our understanding that steps have been made towards an agreement between governments which, to our understanding, will be focused on advanced chip manufacturing technology, including but not limited to advanced lithography tools. Before it will come into effect it has to be detailed out and implemented into legislation which will take time. Do you remember when Bloomberg, the Financial Times, and even the Wall Street Journal reported the U.S. had successfully persuaded Japan and the Netherlands to stop exporting some equipment used to make chips? It's probably safe to assume this is in light of the persuasion. But, 
while the deal was reached, there were some rumors that it wasn't initially announced due to concerns of the American allies, Netherlands and Japan, potentially pissing China off into a potential retaliation. Interestingly, that's not the first time the West has been left wary about China retaliating. While Stacy Rascon and a team from Sanford C. Bernstein played down the widespread belief that standard CPUs used in P. C. S. would be blocked from export to China, as many people initially feared, they spoke about restrictions on the exportation of cutting-edge equipment used to make chips, as well as artificial intelligence restrictions, and they had some interesting things to say. The changes represent a further escalation, and we do not know what China might do in response. Potential retaliation remains a risk. Japan and the Netherlands have a few things in common, such as being allies of the American states, they're also both home to significant manufacturers of semiconductor production equipment. Interestingly, both nations have been particularly wary of China's next course of action. ASML believes America is only pushing Beijing to be independent by developing their technology in the field of cutting-edge chip-making technology, while Japan, perhaps due to being closer in proximity are more worried about a crippling retaliation. According to Shigaharu Aoyama, a ruling Liberal Democratic Party lawmaker serving on trade and industry, China is 100% certain to retaliate against Japan's backing for the semiconductor export controls placed by the U.S. In an interview with Bloomberg, he stated, China will come back with stronger retaliation and Japanese companies doing business there will probably be damaged. To be fair, he does have a good reason for being worried. You see, China has a history of deploying economic sanctions in the middle of political disputes with its neighbors. Recently, in light of Japan and South Korea issuing COVID-19 testing on people traveling from mainland China, Beijing stopped issuing visas for people traveling from the two nations. Do you also remember what happened in 2010? When tensions erupted over East China Sea Islands claimed by China and Japan, the former banned the exportation of rare earth metals to Japan. But there's one thing Aoyama probably hasn't taken note of. In terms of trade conflicts, China always shows restraint. It's always carefully planned. Escalation and damage to their internal economy are always avoided. There's more reason to believe China will continue its quest to be the number one superpower globally as far as technology is concerned by other means, rather than a full retaliation. As the largest economy in the world, China has the means to fight the US. They could even give America a taste of their own medicine by dishing out sanctions, or perhaps even denying the big boys in the field of American tech access to their mammoth internal market but subtlety is going to be far sweeter. China could leverage its control over critical raw materials, rare earth metals, to be more precise. Remember the example we gave earlier? They did the same to Japan in 2010, cutting off the export of these high-tech materials. Now, while these rare earth metals aren't exactly rare in the sense that they can be found outside China, the facilities to refine them are hardly found anywhere else. China also strongly influences the more common materials like tin, aluminum, magnesium, and even cobalt. In 2020, when America cut the Chinese brand, Huawei from access to advanced chip technology, China exercised restraint. Yes, they issued a couple of statements that clearly expressed their boiling anger with the American sanctions, but they still did nothing about it. In essence, they would rather do nothing at all than risk a form of retaliation that would leave them far worse from where they originally stood. It's a smart move from China and they've got to be applauded for it, wouldn't you say? Furthermore, with the current state of economic growth falling short of the Communist Party's target, it's more likely that China will stick to discrete measures that won't impede them from acquiring as much technology as possible, which they're still allowed to, as solid retaliation would do little to remove American sanctions, and would even harm their economic growth. Instead of a war, China could forge new allies on the global stage, poach promising talent and thus acquire better knowledge. Technology analyst Dan Wang also seems to have a similar train of thought. At Gafkel Dragonomics, he predicted, Beijing is likely to continue avoiding tit-for-tat reprisals against U.S. companies in the near term, while encouraging American companies to invest more in China, on the theory that businesses with a vested interest in the China market will be a counterweight to hostile politicians in Washington. One thing is for sure though. If China is given the option of either engaging in a war or entering a truce with the US, they will take the latter with open arms. What are your thoughts, though? Do you think China is playing the waiting game by being calculative and never forgetting the bigger picture? Also, 
Is there any chance that China will retaliate soon? Let us know in the comment section, and don't forget to explore more videos on our channel, subscribe, and give us a thumbs up.